Um, so, um, whew, what can I even tell you about this topic? What can we, where do I even start with you wonderful people? So, um, you guys, a lot of you know me already. A lot of you know me uh, quite well. And then, actually, there's a lot of new people on today who, who don't know me and are new to access consciousness and are new to these tools. So we have a really wide range of um, access acumen. And um, so for those of you who, who know me, you know, I facilitate a lot on money. Um, it's a subject that I really enjoy. Um, I wouldn't say it's a particularly, um, light or wonderful subject on planet earth. It's actually a subject of, um, a lot of pain, suffering, self-hatred, self-loathing, um, detriment, suicide, um, divorce, pretty much anything bad. Money can create that. Um, and so, but it's really not money's fault. It's, you know, like the book Garrett by Gary Douglas, money's not the problem, you are. So, um, so I, I facilitate a lot of classes on money and do a lot of work on money. Um, and I've just developed actually a new two and a half day class on money called What Would Embarrass You Into Having Money? And I just did the first one in New uh, in Mumbai, India, which was quite an awesome journey. And, um, and so it's a topic. And um, I actually have found that it is um, really tough for people. And they really have the point of view that there's nowhere they can look, nowhere they can go, nothing that they can change that would actually make this better. And so I'm not going to promise you that in 45 minutes that I can make it better for you. But within 45 minutes, <laughs> I think one lady went like this and then like left the, left the computer screen. I think she was thinking about something else, but it was a really funny exit at the perfect time. <laughs> She's like my life. Um, but I have a lot of tools and I have a lot of new things that have shown up with regards to money that I want to share with you guys. So I hope that all of those of you who are new and all of those of you who are old get something new out of today. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about um, is that for me, none of this is about the money. Like, I actually don't really care about money that much. It's not really that big of a deal to me. I like I really could care less about it and it's not something I even really want to think about that much <laughs> um, but it's also something that we should have as such an interesting point of view that when we put our attention on it just our generative energy and our attention is enough to generate it in our lives and enough to bring it into our lives so for me, the purpose of, my, of the, the ways to change money, the way to make money better in your life is for money to be an interesting point of view. And if it's not that, if it's not just an interesting point of view, it's probably not going to be as bountiful, abundant, and as easy as it could be. Because um, a lot of people make money really significant and work really hard for it or avoid working really hard for it um, so that they can torture their, themselves with money, whether they are having a lot of it or not having a lot of it. So everywhere that you have tortured yourself to make sure that you refuse money, will you destroy and create that times a godzillion? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pot, shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah, we're really good uh, sadists, you know? It's like S&M in your head every single day. You're whipping yourself. You're chaining yourself to the bed. You're, you know, thrashing yourself. And But we really do that. It's like most people's basic point of view with money is how can I best torture myself today? So everywhere your basic point of view about money is, how can I best torture myself today with money? Will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pock and pod, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Um, so what you could do instead is you really could get yourself a cute leather whip 
and some really cool chains from the hardware store and make sure you have a bed post with like posts and start chaining yourself to the bed and having somebody come in and whip you really hard because then at least you would be getting yourself torture in every day but it wouldn't have to be through money okay so everything that brought up will you destroy and uncreate it all right and wrong good and bad all nine pot and pock shorts boys and beyonds so um so it's not really like really not much of this has to do with money but it does have to do with money becomes a um weapon of self-torture um rather than a um tool that makes creating possibilities a little more filled with choice and that's all that money really is it's just a tool that um, allows creating possibilities to be a little more filled with choice and that's about it it's not anything important it's not anything great it doesn't make somebody better than another person it's just something that um, is the byproduct of what you're already creating okay so everywhere you're looking at how to create money rather than how to create will you destroy and uncreate it all right and wrong good and bad all nine pot and pock shorts boys and beyonds and um i dare you guys to do interesting point of view i have this point of view about money 300 times a day for two weeks and see where that gets you and i would just sit there and like when i have done it i just sit there and i either count it out on my fingers or i use my little my notebook that I still have from university that had extra pages. So I would just, this is my notebook that I use for everything. It never seems to run out. It's like the notebook that never ends. And um, I just like make little ticks and I'm like, okay, I got to 300. It can take a while, but you can do it while you're driving. You can count it out. But it's like, if you have a point of view about money, like forget about it. You got to get rid of your points of view about money first. And nobody really believes an interesting point of view. I have this point of view. But if you're weird enough to believe that it works and actually use it, you might have a better life. You might have a different reality. Okay? Cool. So, um, what can I tell you? So, does anybody have any questions? Oh, um, the other thing that I wanted to say is um, I wanted to talk a little bit about energy pulls. So, so one of the things, um, one of the cool things that Gary has said is the amount of money that you make is directly proportionate to how many people you engage with in a day. Okay, so if you're not engaging with anybody, you're probably not going to be making very much money. And if you're really engaging with people in whatever way that is, it's not necessarily through talking. Um, but the more people that you engage with, the more money that you make. And then the other way of another portion or way to engage with the universe is to. Um, is to actually get present with the universe and pull energy. And so I, you know, I have done a lot of classes on energy pulls a few years back. Um, I did like six months of classes and it was really fun. And um, a lot of people really just through that tool were able to pull in all kinds of things that they had been looking for. I mean, one guy, I met him at a class like a year later and he's like, Julia, look at this this wood fire burning stove that I built in my backyard. And he like had built this whole fortress and this whole like wall and with this like fire burning pizza stove in the middle. And he was making his family pizza. And he, it was like really cool. That was something that he wanted to have in his life. And he's like, I pulled energy just asking for things I desire, not even thinking necessarily about how much I wanted my, wood-fired pizza oven um but i i just all of a sudden i had extra money and this is what i put it towards and it's just making me so happy and i was like 
dude, like, that's amazing. It never shows up how, how you think it will show up. And he didn't even specifically ask for it. But he engaged with the universe, and the universe worked with him and was like, hey, I'd like to actually contribute this to you. And he, it made it really easy for him. But I think that I think that it's talking with the universe and engaging with the universe is um, something we could fare to get a lot better at. Um, the universe isn't really as out there as we think it is or as, um, what's the word, as um, like, like um, ominous or um, far away or also like esoteric. Like it's not that difficult to actually engage with the universe. And sometimes I just like, I don't really talk to the universe, but like asking questions, I, I do. I talk to the universe in the form of asking questions. And one of the questions that I ask is like, I've had to really learn how to choose. And learning how to choose, I'm starting to get it. Like, this is kind of just new for me. But, like, to really choose in every 10 seconds with no judgment. And it's like, it's like, we have to function from the question of, you know, like, what would I like to do today that would make me happy right away? And, and, and if you follow that, that's how you learn to choose. It doesn't work for a humanoid to go, okay, tomorrow I'm going to get this done and I'm going to get this done and I'm going to get this done. Because then when tomorrow comes, you're a humanoid and you've already forced yourself to do this with your day. You've said, I'm going to get this done and this done and this done. And if you don't get it done, then you get to torture yourself for the whole day. And, but because you've told yourself that that's what you're getting done tomorrow, you have to rebel against yourself because you're a humanoid. And when somebody tells you to do something, you have to do the opposite. So if you tell yourself, I'm going to get these things done tomorrow, you literally can't do those things with ease. Okay, so it doesn't work for you to like project this is what I'm going to do tomorrow or even this is what I'm going to get done today. You have to, it has to take this place of more presence in every 10 seconds. Like, okay, so, you know, Gary starts his day and he goes, okay, where would I, what can I put my attention on today? And you can have a list of all your projects, but it's not about... I'm going to get these things done tomorrow because this is going to like check off my structure and it's going to make life work better. That's not how the universe functions. That's not communion with the universe. That's called rightness, which turns into wrongness. You know, we decide that if we get it all done, it'll be right. And then we don't. And then we feel wrong. It's not the same as having the point of view of what would I like to do today that would make me happy right away. And if you do this, you'll notice maybe a few days of like going for ice cream <laughs> and walking the dog and, you know, watching TV and masturbating. But after a while, watching TV and masturbating all day long gets kind of boring. And then you kind of want to start creating other things and doing other things. But it's like you got to do it like by including yourself, not by excluding yourself through judgment, not by going, okay, this is what has to get done. Not what I'd want to do today, but it's what I got to do today. The universe don't, homie, don't play that. The universe is like, no. It, I'm not going to let you be miserable. You don't get to exclude yourself in the computation of your own life because you are the universe. And so the universe is like, you don't get to exclude me because you are the universe and you are you also. You're all of it. So it, does, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work to go, okay, this is what I'm going to do tomorrow. This is what I have to get done. And if I don't get it done, then it's a wrongness.
okay? It's a much kinder way to live. It's a much gentler way to live. Um, but we're not used to it. It's like the antithesis of what we've been taught by our family and our parents and school and government and everything around us. Okay, you don't get to just like go, okay, what's gonna make me happy today? You know, you get to until you're like 11 during summer holidays only, you know? And then once you're, you know, once you get to be a little bit older, you don't get to just hang out with your friends and play video games and do things. But if you define your business as work, your business isn't going to work that well. It has to be included in this bigger sphere and this bigger ecosystem of possibilities rather than you shutting it out in order to, in order to, be, to be successful or to make money or to survive. Okay? So um, I can perceive everybody going, I don't know. I'll probably just watch TV for the rest of my life. I don't like this method, Julia. <laughs> but that's because you're addicted to creating through judgment rather than allowing yourself to create through peace. We don't believe that we can create through peace. Like, um, I've been, I was at Gary's house recently, um, cause my husband works on him and Gary's house is like a fortress of kindness, gratitude, peace, and calm. And I had been judging myself really harshly that day for what I wasn't doing and wasn't being. And we walked into Gary's house and I started weeping in his kitchen, um, and I was, I, because it was such a force of kindness, gratitude, peace, and calm that like I couldn't keep that judgment in existence while being in his house. And it's Dane's house too. Just Dane wasn't home at the time. But like I was in their house and it was like, <laughs> and I was just like my whole body was releasing because I had done... I was all up in here and I was judging myself and making myself wrong and telling myself all the things that I wasn't being and wasn't doing and wasn't creating and how I'm not enough. And it was like that kindness, gratitude, peace and calm just melted it. It just eliminated it. And since then I've been asking, what's it gonna take for me to be that kindness, gratitude, peace and calm for me every single day. I wanna be my own fortress, but there's really only one tool that will build the fortress as quickly as possible, and that one tool is interesting point of view. I have this point of view. So it's like that is, I mean, that's a, it's a different reality. It's like really like an actually a different reality. Like nobody's taught you how to do things this way before. And it takes a lot of trust in yourself to actually like go from a different perspective and, and, and generate money from a really different place. Um, so, but you know, I, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say about energy pools is energy pools are really about engaging with the universe. And a lot of people when they're doing the energy pools are only pulling positive energy. Like they go, okay, I'm gonna pull energy, but they're only pulling in things that they would like or things that they think are right. You might be doing it and you don't even know it. If your energy pulls aren't that effective, it's because you're pulling positive energy. What you need to do when you pull energy is pull positive energy and negative energy. Okay? So, there's no like right way of pulling. Like we, we try to go, okay, I'm going to pull in all the good stuff. I'm going to like pull in the life I'm supposed to have rather than pulling the in, like pulling the good, the bad and the ugly receiving all of it and letting it all contribute. Cause when you pull the negative and the positive, everything just kind of works. 
okay? It's not like my shit don't stink and I'm gonna pull it all, or I'm only gonna pull the good stuff. You know, it's like you gotta pull the, the all energy. And I can't really describe how, just perceive yourself pulling all the positive and negative energy. Go ahead, Chris. Chris. No, I was just going to ask you that. I mean, how do you know when you're pulling only the positive and how do you know when you're bringing in everything? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would just, I would just play with it. Like, cause there's no really way to learn other than playing with it because it's not something verbal that I can like help you with necessarily in a conversation. But if you, I can kind of give you the energy and like, it's like, it's like, it's like the energy of all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. Glory. I just said glory. Glory. Like the, like pulling in the good, the bad and the ugly. And like, and like, if you notice that when you're pulling energy, it feels kind of like weak or kind of weird, or it's like, it's not really creating a massive effect. It's because you're eliminating so much you're actually doing, you're breaking commandment number 10, no exclusion. You're excluding most of the universe, much of the universe. When you're pulling positive energy, you're only pulling in things you've already judged. You're being judgmental. So you just want to, you just want to ask and just perceive, like, just ask, like, how am I pulling energy now? Like, what are my energy flows in my life? And then go, okay, well, that's kind of weak or weird. Or you'll perceive that like you're actually like, if you are pulling everything in, you'll perceive it and you'll pull, you'll pull everything in. So, um, you just got to play with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay, cool. You're welcome. Awesome. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any other questions? Have questions on the chat? Oh yeah. I told people they could ask in the chat. And then I forgot about them. All right. So we have Rabia. So hey, Julia. Hi. Who's there? Who's talking? Hey. Uh, this is Dana. Hi, Dana. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. What's your question? Oh. Okay. Um, so my question is about barriers. Okay. Um. So lately it feels like I'm bombarded with people telling me I need to learn how to put boundaries up with people, specifically men type people. And because none of them do access um, or just like lack of people that I'm, I feel like I can even talk to them about the difference between barriers and boundaries. I'm realizing like there's, it's not like I want to throw away what they're saying to me, but I'm also confused oh, about throw it away. That. Crap. <laughs> Can you help me throw it away? I feel like, I feel like because it's coming from every direction, I'm supposed to pay attention. Well, that's a very meta metaphysical point of view. Uh huh. Because it's coming from every direction. It must mean something. <laughs> Rather than, does this make my life better or does this make my life worse? Oh, it makes my life worse. I guess most people are trying to make my life worse. Okay, I'm going to get some new friends. Yeah. It's like you're trying to listen to others as though other people can help you create your life. You really want to seek out awareness that's going to create a greater future. You don't want other people's points of view. Mm. There's a difference between a point of view and an awareness. And you're trying to make points of view valuable to you. If I would have listened to the points of view of all the people around me, I would probably have four kids and be on a farm right now. Mm -hmm. No offense to those of you who have four kids and are on a farm. Just not the kind of lifestyle for me. Other people's dream doesn't work for me. So it's like I had to go, okay, so everybody around me thinks I'm crazy. Everybody around me thinks I'm nuts. Does it really matter? Are they going to be living my life in the future? No. Nope. 
Dana? Yeah, I'm here. I can I ask about? <laughs> I'm here. I just I, don't I, like your answer. <laughs> uh no, it's it it's well. I I I like I was watching a video by Dane here yesterday. Um the turning up your energetic capacities and I was watching like a girl flopping on the thing and I was <laughs> thinking about how like I haven't I've taken these kinds of classes but I haven't been to a live access class and how years ago that was just so available as an option that was like not a thing I was limiting myself on I was just taking classes and then I made it kind of a rule that I was going to limit my spending and that the main thing I was spending a lot of money on was like access and stuff like that and then I could just stop that and then save and make money and I'm finding this like wave of the beginning experiences I had kind of uh, when I just when I was just excited and kind of um hmm, how to how to um, not everything start from, this yeah is going to be the way it was when you started a lot of people mm -hmm. think, oh man, you know, everything in access was so easy when I started and now it's so much heavier. But Dana, you're also way more aware than you were. And awareness is mm -hmm. not nice. I mean, awareness is actually awesome when you don't have a point of view, but when you're buying other people's awareness, it's not nice. And so doing more and more and more access can make things kind of more and more painful if you're not willing to realize that the awareness is not yours. And that is mm. an interesting point of view. And does that go along also with knowing what is yours? Yeah, absolutely. That is knowing what is yours. I hate to tell you, but you're just kind of basically a happy person. <laughs> oh, it's terrible news. I know. <laughs> 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 no then they'll attack you harder. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to make stupid people's realities correct for you. Have you, have you upgraded your friends as you've gone along this journey? Like I'm constantly cutting upgraded. friends. I've added, I've added and, Add. added and 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 added. And I'm lucky enough to know people everywhere in the whole world. I have friends, the whole, the whole, and everywhere I go, not just when I'm doing classes or I'm hosted, I make friends with everybody. The man eating a sandwich on the subway. And sometimes I don't like to talk, but it's like, and I didn't get rid of my old friends. I just also realized that I'm a completely different person than they are. But it doesn't mean that I eliminate them or exclude them. I definitely spend probably one tenth of the time with them but i also have a lot of i mean i just i don't listen you can't listen to stupid people mm -hmm. and by stupid i mean anybody who doesn't get your reality so you pretty much can't listen to anybody <laughs> okay and all that metaphysical stuff about friendship and what and and conscious relationships and and all that stuff it's all just ways to limit us so that we have to be like other people and we have to find commonality and common ground there's no commonality and no common ground between a dolphin and a cloud they just have different points of view they can't give each other advice you know, when a dolphin has a sore back, it can't really discuss it with a cloud. 
<laughs> you know, so you have to you have to talk to somebody based on what they can hear and not share your problems with your friends. If you have a problem, share it with another facilitator that you trust or pay for a private session or you know, if somebody calls me, I'll give them five to 10 minutes of my time for free. Just like, but do it with somebody who actually like see who's going to ask you a question, not tell you that you have weird boundary issues with men. <laughs> ask for people and ask for people in your life and future who are going to empower you. I tell this story over and over and over, but I asked for people to come in for the most kind, fun, silly, conscious, happy beings to be a part of my everyday life. And now that's what I have. Okay, so you gotta ask. I love you receive. Yeah, I loved what you said about Gary and Dane's house. I was like, that, that is the space. Like, yes, like, <laughs> Totally. It's like, that's what the kindness, gratitude, peace, and calm bar is about that nobody really gets or sees or even has any kind of interest in seeking out. You know, but with any luck, you can, if you want to, you can have that as your reality. Mm -hmm. but nobody you have to realize you. that that's what you desire and just because it's valuable to you it does not mean it's valuable to others mm. you cannot bring it to others you can become it and that's it Because when you try to bring that space to others, they have to reject you. If you bring kindness, gratitude, peace, and calm, and you try to deliver it to somebody who really would rather have trauma and drama and self-hatred, it feels like a violation to them. Like it, it, it's violating, it's not kind. When somebody has trauma and drama and upset, you go, oh, I am so sorry for you. That's just awful. And if you really don't want to hang out with them anymore, go, oh, it's just terrible. If I had your life, I would just kill myself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. It's not being better than other people. It's having a different point of view and wanting something different out of life than other people. What you want is not better than other people, but it's really different. And it's gonna be way more fun. It's called a big life rather than a small, tiny life. Okay? All right. Yeah. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, so, you know, the topic of the Zoom was called generating the cash to, to come to classes. And um, so one of the things that I want to kind of reiterate is, you know, when you desire to take a class and you have the point of view that that class is going to be the generating creator for your future, that becomes really significant and it makes it really difficult to create the money for that class because you've made that class the source for you rather than you being the source for you. Okay. So if you, there's a class you would really like to go to, you know, you've got to get to interesting point of view about that class being significant or that class is going to, to give you something, because it will give you something. I mean, I, I've never been to a class with, with 
Gary or Dane, Simone, Brennan, pretty much all facilitators that didn't make my life way, way greater. But that doesn't mean that I'm not great without it or that it's really significant or that it, I can't get by without it. So in order to generate the cash to actually take the classes you'd like to have and have the things that you'd like to have in your life, you've got to realize that, that the way that things are already is awesome and that you can have more. But not from the need of having more, from the choice of having more. And um, another great access quote is, never make a big deal out of anything and you will have everything work out for you. <laughs> Cynthia's eyes were like, oh yeah! Yeah, never make a big deal out of anything and you will always have everything work for you. Nevi Data says, what would it take to generate more cash to go to classes and travel? Because I do classes and travel and instantly feel guilty for doing so, apart from everything else, feel inadequate. Nevi Data, Nevi Data was the only person who took every single class that Anthony and I facilitated when we went to India last two weeks. And I love how you're the one who is making yourself wrong for not coming to classes because you literally have this ability, you have created, you have generated, you have chosen more for yourself. And so everywhere you're trying to destroy what you have already created, will you destroy and uncreate that, my dear yeah. friend? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pot and pox, shorts, boys and beyonds. Is this your way of not receiving the good fortune that you created for yourself? Yeah. Okay. And they happen a lot. It happens a lot. Quite a bit. No, it doesn't. And then I, I, it happens a lot and I put breaks to it. No, it doesn't happen a lot. You created a lot. Nothing happens. Ah, uh, yeah. You're not some powerless victim. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. So you got to change, you got to take that word out of your dictionary that it happens to you a lot. Okay. Okay. It just, nothing ever happens to you. So it's like, you've got to look at, you know, I mean, how about this one? What energy, space, consciousness, and choice can you be? to be the poor, pathetic Indian slave you would really like to be. <laughs> and everything that is yeah. Godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right yes. now, in that all nine yeah. shorts, boys and beyond. That word is a lot in my dictionary. I kept, do you think I'm a slave? Do you think I'm a slave, you know? I mean, when I keep talking. Yeah. 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 It from your head. It's like, it's like you, you've got to realize that you can create something different, but you can also create little bumps and then pull yourself and drag yourself down into, into the terrible reality that's more solid for you and more real for you than the reality of greatness that you are also capable of creating. You know, yeah. just because you want to have things better, it doesn't mean they're going to get better because you hope for them to get better. You know, mm -hmm got to actually choose to have things better um i get i think i get um ashamed of my choices after making those choices and creating it well it is shameful for a slave to do whatever she wants to do when she wants to do it and travel to nice places yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you might want to get over being a slave so you can do whatever the hell you want yeah, I think recently I was seeing a video or someplace. I, I think uh, uh, Dan and Gary's video with the kids recently. And uh, G Gary was saying, if people don't want you to be happy, just pretend to be crying, right? <laughs> yeah. Cry when yeah. you too. And laughing inside. I think I have interesting points of view about pretending. So I think I'll do that interesting point of view. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view about pretending. Yes. The great pretender. Yes. Enigma. <laughs> and what? Enigma. Enigma. People yeah. don't understand. Yeah, people don't understand, and you want to be understood, and try hard Ooh. to fit in. All Ooh. that. All of those yeah. of you who want to be understood. That goes with that Dana too. Will you guys destroy and create that? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod pod shorts. Sorry, but nobody understands you. Nobody even really likes you, let alone understands you. Yeah. So forget it, about there's it. There's no fan contest that is going to be won anyway. No. <laughs> you can have a different reality, but I don't think you're going to win a human reality fan contest. Yeah. I mean, you can keep trying, but it's not very fun. What's happening after the classes is that uh, I ask you questions, and then there's also an awareness that's coming in. Hold on, you know, hold on. Like, hold on. What did you, what was, repeat what you just said. After the classes? No, you said something else. You said what what's I... happening after class. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I think I've got to tell Vidur that I shouldn't be using the word "happens" anymore, and he's gonna catch it for me. Yeah, totally. So he does. He does that with buts and haves. <laughs> Good. So I think yeah. I could add one more word in his dictionary. Exactly. You have to pay him five rupees every time you say "happen." Oh, he charges seventeen hundred bucks Good. for everything. Good. Keep that up. It's not five. He charges in grands. <laughs> awesome. I like it. Yeah. All right. Um, we only Thank have a few you. minutes left. You're so welcome. Thanks for asking the question. Um, Rabia says, can you please talk about creating money as being a humanoid? I, pretty, I think that's what this whole Zoom was about. I mean, I mean, really what I am interested, I just muted you, Shelly. Um, you can unmute yourself if you have a question. Um, but, um, I mean, it's like, it's not about the money. Like money is not going to get you where you want to go. Money is not that special. Money is just this awesome energy that can make you have a little bit more choices, but it really is not that significant an element in the creation of your life. Okay, so if you, if you want to have it easy, if you want to have it kinder and gentler, it's like you have to be willing to make money an interesting point of view. Okay, and you have to have the point of view of not how can I torture myself with money today? How can I, how can I, be right with money today you have to have the point of view of you know what would I like to do today that would make me happy right away and you know be willing to have the point of view of what can I be or do different today to create more money right away but what you probably need to be or do different to create more money is to be nicer to yourself and to be happier and to let money be as significant as it really is, which is not that significant. Okay. So, um, so, so this was our, uh, you know, a quick 45 minute conversation and um, I, you know, I really, I know that, that for a lot of humanoids, you know, getting to classes is a, is a tough thing. You know, you couldn't go to every single access class you wanted to go to or telecall you wanted to do on a regular income, income. And it's designed that way so that you do have to reach and be different with yourself and not make money in this really abusive, harsh human way to start generating money in a really, really easy way. Um, 
So, and, and if this was a really tough Zoom for you and like you kind of liked it, but you kind of hated it in a way because it sort of goes against what you've been taught to such a degree that it just sort of makes you mad, it might be a good one to keep listening to over and over. Um, we'll send out the MP3 and um, I'm also just going to put it publicly on YouTube for the public to do what they will with. Um, and uh, so you can share it with your friends on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but it's, uh, you know, money, money is it's not an easy topic. It's not a nice topic, um, but it really doesn't have to be the center of your life. It can just be, be this sort of nectar, this sort of goodness that, that comes in and contributes to you. Um, but it's not, it's not the be all end all of your universe. Okay. So I hope that you guys have gotten some good tools from this, um, in the, the short time and more so than, than that. Um, also just sort of the energies of this being a really different area and a really different energy and a, a kinder, a kinder place. And Seda asks, can we do some 13s about money? Don't really get that we can. I think it's more of like an interesting point of view and a, and a, a shift to more kindness. But thanks for asking. And Audrey says, thanks for this call. I will see you in Miami later this month for bars, foundation, and body classes. Yes, I will be in Miami. I'm going to Miami and Brazil. I'm really excited. Um, and... Uh, so we have that, and um, what else can I tell you guys? What kind of upcoming events? Oh, um, Emily, this is this is up on the Access website. It's not yet been launched on my website. Emily Russell and I are doing a four-part series on um, the sex you know is possible coming up in October. So that's a cool a cool one. We're going to do a telecall, um, you know. But yeah, I just I really wanted to have this conversation because. I really, really, um, I don't know. I guess I need my hopes and dreams bars run. But what would it be like if there was a kinder, gentler, really, really different place on this planet for money? And um, you could have the greatness of you with or without money. You know, a lady is a lady whether she has money or doesn't have money. And you don't become more of a lady the more money you have and less of a lady the less money that you have okay and the same goes for being a gentleman it's not the creative source for your life the way that you be in the world the way that you um, be with others the way that you include yourself in your life rather than excluding yourself from your life that's what makes you a lady and, or, I mean, we have mostly women on this call, but that's what makes you a lady or a gentleman. Not money, not the rightness, not who likes you, you know, how many friends you have or how good the clothes in your closet are. It's like that stuff is a nice side effect if you're willing to be really, really kind to yourself. Okay? But the kindness has to come first. All right, so that's it. So it was a happy Monday call, and um, I hope to see you guys somewhere in the world sometime. And uh, how does it get better? Awesome. Bye, guys. Thank you.